batting sixth and catching Nathan Marshman. Batting seventh, playing second base, Bry Brylan Smith. Braylon Smith, excuse me. Batting eighth and DHing will be Bryce Smith. Bryce will be DHing for right fielder Marshall, Marshall Platts. And batting ninth and playing center field, Chase Miller. Now for your own Rochester Zebras. Leading off and playing shortstop, Tarek McLaughlin. Batting second, playing second, Gavin Young. Batting third and playing third, Tanner Reinhardt. In the cleanup spot and on the hill, E squared, Evan Elliott. Batting fifth and catching, Jake Seifert. Batting sixth at first base, Braden Zink. Batting seventh in right field, Luke Honey. Batting eighth and playing left field, Hunter Campbell. And rounding out the zebra lineup in center field, Landon Bumford. Now, would everyone please rise? And gentlemen, remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. Okay, here's the uh, first pitch of the game. Evan Elliott to Joe strap -Louis. He's the pitcher. He'll be followed by Silas Kayser. First pitch is a breaking ball low and away. Stevens on deck. Is it really? Last, last home event of the season, of the year. High ball. Shep Louie, a 587 hitter, 27 RBIs. Strike, good pitch by Evan Elliott. It was interesting talking to Corey Good about Evan Elliott's arm durability. He said Evan plays a lot of long toss, and he says his arm never feels tired. Pitches inside, ball three. Rochester is 12 and 4 overall. They're 6 and 3 at home and 6 and 1 on the road. Good deal. Pitch is high. A lead off walk to Joe, Joe Shrap Louie. Yeah. Elliott comes in with a 1 and 1 record and a 3.43 ERA. 16 and a third innings, 19 hits, 13 runs, only 8 earned, but 15 walks in those 16 and a third innings. He does have 17 strikeouts, though. That's good. So we'll lead off with just Trap Louie, and that'll bring up shortstop Silas Kayser. 
So Shrepp, Louis, Kayser, Stevens, the top three in the John Glenn order. Hannah, Lizzie, Marshman, the middle three. Mm-hmm. Braylon Smith, Bryce Smith, and Miller, the bottom three. And the flex player is Platts. It will be their right fielder. Which is outside. Rochester is not using a DH today. Rochester going with McLaughlin, Young, and Reinerts, the top three. Elliott, Cipher, and Zink, the middle three. Hunting, Campbell, and Bumford, the bottom three. Landon Bumford in the lineup today in center field. And Braden Zink's playing first base. We have not seen Braden play there that much. Strike. One and one to Kayser. Kayser is also on there. He's a really good basketball player as well. Yeah. This kid, Silas Kayser. 549 hitter. 39 for 71. Over and out in time. We talk about 20 RBIs being a you know, sign you're being productive at the plate. They already have five guys with 20 plus. And Marshman has 19. Strike. One and two. Hey, Jake, good? It's going all right, graduate. Hey, yeah, congrats. Thank you. Sort of makes me proud of you. You know that. One two pitch, but Elliot will throw over instead to Zink. Not time. You make me dizzy. Oh, that's true. That makes me dizzy. So we've seen a lot of Zink at second base this year. We haven't seen him a lot at first base. We have got Gavin Young at second base today. The one two pitch. Oh. That might have hit the cutout between the grass and the dirt, and it just took a crazy hop over Cypher's head. That's a wild pitch. Trap Louie now at second. Yeah, I don't remember seeing Braden at first. Besides pitching, uh, he's been pretty exclusive at second base. Mm-hmm. No Ethan Medina today. He's got a boot on that injured ankle. High ball. Three and two. Talked to Corey Good before the game. He doesn't think it's going to be a long-term issue. But probably, again, a definite no, I I would assume, for tomorrow against Winnemac and a probable no for Monday at Peru. Grounder coming in on it. McLaughlin throws to first for the out. Trap Louie advances. Runner at third, one out. Third baseman, Colin Stevens. We'll bring up the third baseman, Colin Stevens. Colin is a 470 hitter. <laughs> Graduated a few years ago at Culver. Pitching too much, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just different Colin Stevens. Yeah. Oh, gets underneath the glove and coming in to score is Shrap Lily. Well, yeah, the first one bounced way over Cypher. That one went through the five hole. Yeah. Uh, well, I figured my son-in-law one nothing John Glenn. The tractor because of Count is 1-0 and oh on Colin so Stevens. We can get a robot to paint the field then, huh? You know? Hi. Yeah. Pitch is high, 3 0. The John, the, uh, John Glenn head coach is John Nadolny. He's over in the third base coach's box. Cool. And we, I think we talked about on Talking Sports, he is as highly respected a coach as there is in the area. He puts out good ball clubs every year, and there's a base on balls for Stevens. That's cool. That's smaller than I even thought, too. Yeah, it's not very big. Chris Rochester had that great, great win over John Glenn in the sectional final in 2014 at Mishawaka Marion. Andrew Feldman was just on point that day on the mound. I'll bring up the first baseman, Bryson Hanna. High, snap throw, wild throw. And down the right field line, Stevens might make it to third. He will make it to third. E2. Coach 
Good going to come out here and talk to uh, the team, the whole infield coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Is this kind of the one of those instances you think where maybe they're kind of psyching themselves out a little bit here early? I mean, you see the record of, of John Glenn and you see, you know, what, what they've got as far as hitting and you maybe kind of over – overemphasize things and you're trying to make that throw you're trying to you know get that guy at first you don't want him to get on and, and then you make a mistake and I think it's yeah it maybe it's a little bit of that it's try, it's like okay I got to throw my best curveball my I got to throw a perfect curveball yeah. I got to throw a, and maybe the adrenaline's flowing a little bit and then you're not yourself a little bit yes one and oh hi two and oh Okay. Hannah, 375 hitter, five homers, 29 RBIs. Stevens has 39 Ooh, okay. RBIs. Gotcha. Take with us to football. He's their team leader. Gotcha. Football oh. line, the lineman back. All three. Yeah. Two tackling the real box. They're really cool. Yeah, she even told me the charger knew this. Football team. Really cool I knew this. Football team. Football Pitch is high. That's the base on balls for Hannah. First and third with one out. Frankie Lizzie is the batter. He is their senior left fielder. He's a 389 hitter. One homer, 22 RBIs. Frankie Lizzie. Ball. Here goes the runner. And Hannah will steal second. The throw by Cypher went to third base. Stevens gets back. So runners at second and third now with one out. Outside. Five seniors in the starting lineup for John Glenn. Seems like we talk about everybody being a young team. This is this is a veteran team. It's played a lot of baseball together. They got a lot of seniors, don't they? One and two. Fly ball to right center field, hit well. And not being able to get it is the center fielder. And then two runs was going to score on the play. Bumford went back on it, but he didn't have it. Hannah was pretty careful. He didn't want to get too far away from the bag but he was still able to score from second on the play. So it's a two-run double for Frankie Lizzie. John Glenn leads it three to nothing. Catcher Nathan Marshman. Bring up the catcher, Nathan Marshman. First pitch strike. Marshman is a 381 hitter, one homer, 19 RBIs. Doesn't really get any easier as you get down the lineup, does it? No. Where did it go? It's a foul ball. It, there was a second. It, like it hit the ground, and then there was like a second noise. Yeah. And I think it hit the bat. Yeah, I was wondering if, if they were going to call him on that check swing, but apparently it uh, made contact, huh? Yeah, so it's an 0-2 count. Marshman's not arguing, so yeah. that's what didn't want to happen. Yeah. Grounder, second base, Young. To Zink for the out. Advancing to third is Lizzie. Bring up the junior 
second baseman, Braylon Smith. He is a 357 hitter. But he's just 5 for 14, so he hasn't batted a whole lot. First pitch is high. Fly ball to right. And it is caught to retire the side that was hunting out there. That does it for the top of the first inning for John Glenn. They score three on one hit, one error, and one left. At the end of half an inning, it's John Glenn three and Rochester zero, and you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field. Moving into the bottom of the first, Glenn got three runs on one hit. One Rochester error in the top and lead 3 nothing here. And You know, they're, they're as advertised. I mean, they're a good team, solid team, and uh, they kind of uh, took advantage of a couple of Rochester mistakes there in the top of the first. And we've talked about plate this. You know, Corey Goods talked about plate discipline with his own team. Well, you saw a good example of plate discipline there from John Glenn. They... They were waiting for a good pitch to hit, and if they didn't get a good pitch to hit, they went, walked on over to first base and let and let uh, Stevens do the damage, or excuse me, Lizzie do the damage with the big two-run double. Tarek McLaughlin, Gavin Young, and Tanner Reinhardt stew for Rochester in the bottom of the first. It's Joe Strap Louie. This is uh, Glenn's. What you'd say their number two pitcher? Um, I'm inclined to. I'm inclined to say he's their number three. Number I think three I'd go Stevens, time. Hannah, Strap, Louie. Okay. Uh, Marshman's actually seen a few innings, but I, I would say I'd call uh, Marshman their number four. Um, Strap, Louie, five and one record, one point three one ERA. 26 and two-thirds innings. He allowed 21 hits, 13 runs, only five earned. He's walked 14, he struck out 39, and he's allowed only one home run in those 26 and two-thirds innings. Again, this was supposed to be a doubleheader back in April. Mm -hmm. So they weren't able to make up both games. They're making up this one game. First first week of the season, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah. It's supposed to have been. Pitch to McLaughlin as a swing and a miss. Tarek is a 408 batter. He has one homer and 17 RBIs. And he leads the team with 14 walks. Grounder, second base. Row by Smith to first is in time. Is that a Val Jinx? I said he leads the team in walks and he swings at the second pitch at the at bat. <laughs> no. I wouldn't call that one. Thank uh, you for letting yeah. me off the hook. Gavin Young steps up. He's a 226 hitter. He did not go. Gavin hitting 226, but he's he's been locked in of late. No homers, two RBIs. Foul ball. Gavin went two for two in that Wabash game that we had the other day. Tap foul. This guy throws a curveball for strikes. You're a high school guy. Oops. And that's kind of, umpire calls that a ball. It is a ball, so the count is two and two. Hmm. Ball three. If there was somebody on base, would you think that would have been a balk? Yes. Okay. That's the, the reason he didn't call for that. Adam swinging. Oh. 
strikeout number one. It's interesting, you know, a lot of a lot of high school pitchers they throw the fastball, to set up the curve. Trap Louis throwing the curve to set up the fastball. Yeah. He's got a nice command of that breaking ball, just watching him here, and then he set it up, set up Young to throw the high fastball, and he got him. That'll bring up the freshman third baseman Tanner Reinarts. Blown away. Tanner hitting 385. No homers, 15 RBIs. Ball away. All these guys were doing T work before the game. I mean, we were here at 2. I mean, there were a bunch of JV kids out practicing, and then when we were out by 3.30, 3.45, there was a ton of kids doing T work. And Tanner was about doing as much as anybody. I mean, Tanner was hitting fungos, and he was doing T-work. He's Again, I, I, it just, I, I so appreciate the work ethic that these kids put in, all three, just to get your program to this level. It's just, there's no, there's no, I know, there's no easy way to do it. You just have to put in the work. 3-1. Ball ball. Might have been up the end of the bat. Full count, Josh. Full count. Tanner's one of those guys, you know, as well as he played for the uh, basketball team. I don't know if you asked him if he would say baseball is probably his first love. I, I would I would say probably yeah. pretty close. I don't think it's tennis. Yeah. Lure to center and it drops for a base hit. Good hitting there with a 3-2 count from Reiner. Yeah, that's that's good hitting and that's strength too because for a lot of guys that would be a pop-up to shortstop. But he's strong enough to muscle it out there and uh, Miller couldn't get it. So our runner at first with two outs and then will bring up Evan Elliott. Evan is a 259 hitter. He has one homer and eight RBIs. It's fun talking with Corey about Evan and and talking sports about kind of how his mind operates and Popped up, foul, out of play. 0-2. We're going to hit you? Oh, you think, huh? Now, a lot of times in this situation, you'd think maybe about running with the runner at first and two outs, but I don't think, I don't think you want to risk it here. If it was like 0 0 or 1 0, maybe you would, but you're on 3. Foul ball. Count hangs at 0 and 2. The thinking being that maybe uh, Shrap Louis is going to waste a pitch. He'll throw one in the dirt. It'll be. Yeah. Marshall will be too concerned trying to pick it out of the dirt that he won't be able to, you know, get a quick release on the ball. Throw the ball down a second, maybe quick, as quickly as he'd like, but that, that's asking a lot here. I, th- I think he'd probably play conservative. Foul ball. John Glenn's team ERA is 2.44. And when you're hitting 426, yeah. it's a nice combo. It is. Got him. Breaking ball. Catcher caught it on the fly, so he's out. For Rochester in the bottom of the first. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of one inning, John Glenn leads Rochester 3 to nothing. And you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland moving into the second. John Glenn remains in the lead 3-0 here over the Zebras. And not a bad bottom of the first for Rochester, but uh, you know Glenn just uh, was able to, uh, to find a way to, to get those outs. And we'll see what they do here. They, they've got to find a way uh, for Rochester to uh, 
Get these Lynn Falcons out of the uh, top of the second here. And we're about to see the Landon Bumford experience on the mound. I think this is his first career varsity pitching experience. And this is just a straight position switch. I believe Evan Elliott's not playing center. And this may be one of those games that uh, we get to see a few of those pitchers that we haven't seen mm -hmm. a whole lot this year. Well, he's Corey Good has said he's been giving eight different guys bullpens. But. Yeah. John Glenn is 18 and two, and it doesn't matter where they play. They're nine and one at home, and they're nine and one on the road. Yeah. They're going to Morgan Township tomorrow. They get a bit, and they have a big game at home with Mishawaka Marion coming up on Monday. Their two losses, they lost at home to Penn, and they just lost on the road to South Bend St. Joe on Wednesday, 2-1. to one. You and talk about uh, TRC being a good baseball conference. I mean, how good is that NIC? Or, yeah, Northern Indiana Conference? Yeah, there are uh, Division One prospects bubbling up in that conference every year. Mm -hmm. You talk teams like Penn and Mishawaka Marion and St. Joe and even Glenn. And it's... Uh, so uh, got a lot of really good teams. First pitch by Bumford. Outside. Just a bit outside. Just a bit. Hey, hold on. Hey, Jay. Jay. Yes, sir. Breaking ball inside, 2-0. No. Leave your hat up here. You know why? That's what I want. I want you to leave it up here. All right. That's why I want you to leave it up here. Strike call. Okay, that literally was just a bit outside. Ball three. on ball is a leadoff walk for Bryce Smith here in the second. Center fielder, Chase Miller. All right, Mr. Screed, now you're ready for some Cubs birthday trivia. Oh, man. You might get me again, Val. Okay. happy with my performance the last time. Okay, I think a bunt. Bumford. We'll throw to first to Zink. Sacrifice, 1-3. Miller is out. Bryce Smith now at second. He's the Cubs shortstop. Played his college baseball at Stanford. Today's his 25th birthday. Nico Horner. Nico Horner. Happy birthday, 20 Nico Horner. Pitcher, Joe Shrap-Louis. I'm going to bring up Joe Shrap-Louis, who walked and scored his first time up. He started the National League. He started for the National League All-Stars at catcher in 2018 and 2019. First pitch ball to Shrap Louie. He's from Venezuela. Today's his 30th birthday. Contreras. Happy birthday, Wilson Contreras. Today's his 30th birthday. Popped up. Tear it. Is that him? Two down. Trap Louie now 0 for 1. And that'll bring up the shortstop Silas Kayser. Grounded to short. He's a relief. Shortstop Silas Kayser. He's a relief pitcher for the Cubs. They just got him. This, this is his first year with the Cubs. He used to pitch for the Orioles and the Rockies and the Reds. Now he pitches for the Cubs. Gave up a couple home runs in San Diego yesterday, but today's his birthday. It's a pretty good, pretty good year, though, for the most part. First pitch ball. Right-handed relief pitcher for the Cubs this year. Pitched for the, or he pitched for the, a little bit for the Reds last year against the Cubs. 2-0 no. on Bumford. All three, knocked down by Seifern. Right-handed 
right-handed relief pitcher for the Cubs. Pitch for the Orioles and the Rockies and the Reds prior to the coming to the Cubs. Strike. Is it Thompson? I don't think so, but no. Today is his 32nd birthday. Line drive left field, that will drop for a base hit. Charging is Campbell. They're going to try to bring in the runner home. It's cut off, and he'll score. RBI single for Silas Kayser. John Glenn leads it four to nothing. So. Throw was cut off. I, I'm not sure if that was supposed to be cut off or if that was supposed to go through, but they do bring the runner home. Coach Nadolny being aggressive there in the third base coach's box. 4 0. John Glenn here in the top of the second. Pitch to Stevens, their RBI leader with 39. Pitches outside. Right handed relief pitcher. Today's his 32nd birthday. Pitches for the Cubs. Runner back. Is that kind of a little bit of a sidearm delivery? A little bit of a sidearm delivery? Is it Roberts? No. See, I'm going to keep guessing. Then I'm going to get mad. Outside, 2-0. Oh. He's mostly been a setup man during his career. He's not been a closer very often. Outside for ball, ball three. Base on balls for Colin Stevens. This is my grandson. His name's Crew. Teaser advances to second. What's going on? Palmer? Can Palmer is Palmer with you? Palmer's up there with you. Now the danger is Bryce and Hannah. They're all dangerous. Is your grandma? Which is high. Huh? Is she? And a lot of times in high school baseball, they throw that four-seam fastball and it kind of gets away from them sometimes. Go for it. Ball two. Was you in the tractor today or not? Huh? Yeah? You was in the tractor? Okay. Were you in the tractor today? Yeah. Ball three. Chester pitchers have walked five already and we're only in the second inning. All right, Mrs. Screeden, let's see if you can answer this one. Today's his birthday. He pitches for the Cubs. It's his 32nd birthday. He's a relief pitcher for the Cubs. He had pitched for the Rockies and the Reds last year. Pitches for the Cubs now. I think he gave up a couple home runs in San Diego the other day. Today's Nico's birthday. Today's Wilson Contreras' birthday. And there's a third guy in the Cubs whose his birthday is today. Is Hannah walks, and that loads the bases. Happy 32nd birthday, Michael Givens. Oh. <laughs> Michael Givens. Mm -hmm. Left fielder, Frankie Lizzie. 
Frankie Lizzie's the batter. He had a double and two RBIs last inning. Lofts this one in the air. Hit pretty well. Elliott. Nope, Campbell. Campbell makes the catch. That retired the side. One run for John Glenn. One hit. No errors, and they leave the bases loaded at the end of an inning and a half. John Glenn leads Rochester 4 to nothing. and you're watching RTC TV 4. 0 one, one. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland, and uh, Glenn adds one in the uh, top of the second foul, but bases loaded could have been worse. I, I thought Bumford did a nice job. Of, he yeah. stayed out of the middle of the plate. He just didn't, he didn't give in. I mean, part of it was maybe he was just having trouble kind of locating pitches the way he wanted to, but at the same time, he didn't give in either. So mm-hmm. I, th- I thought he made, made through it okay and made some nice pitches, got a dangerous hitter and Lizzie out. Not bad for your first inning of work mm-hmm. on the varsity stage. Mm-hmm. It is a warm one out here today, folks. If you're, yeah, the high uh, was supposed to be 83, but I think it's closer to 90. Oh, yeah. it was. Uh, I think my truck was reading 86 on the way back up here, mm-hmm. so it's uh, it's warm. And uh, I'm not going to complain too much about it because we were complaining so long about how cold it was. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. First pitch, low. Here's a non-Cubs birthday. He won the 2002 American League Cy Young Award with those Moneyball Oakland A's. Left-handed pitcher known for his curveball. Pitches away, 2-0, the count to Cypher. Left-handed pitcher won the 2002 American League Cy Young Award winner. Won the 2002 American League Cy Young Award. And then you think he, I think he won a couple World Series rings with the San Francisco Giants. Rounder, shortstop. Throw to first is in time by Kayser. Barry Zito. Today is Barry Zito's 44th birthday. I was right on the tip of my tongue. It's a good one. Today is the birthday First baseman, Braden Zink. Braden Zink, the batter. Zink comes in hitting 225. Five RBIs. Swing and a miss, one and one. He was the 1990 World Series MVP. Today is his birthday. Who am I talking about? 1990 World Series MVP. What team? Cincinnati Reds. Not Eric Davis. That's a, that's a good guess. Junior? Ron Baldo Short. Throw to first is in time by Kayser to retire Zink. One of the great upsets in baseball history when the Reds beat the A's in the 1990 World Series, and this guy was the World Series MVP that year. Yes, he's a pitcher. Luke Hunting, Luke Hunting, the batter. Luke is a 280 hitter. Two RBIs in the season, but the second one was the game winner against McConaughey in extra innings on Wednesday. Luke Hunting was the 1990 MVP? Luke Hunting, the 1990 World Series MVP. That's awesome. Marty Brenneman is he are best buddies. Strike one and one. No. Good guess. Good guess. Not Randy Myers. One and two, the count. What was interesting about this guy is he he won the world he won the World Series MVP pitching against the A's. He started his career with the A's. No, not Catfish Hunter. He's not. Got him looking with a fastball. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left in the bottom of the second. The end of two innings. It is John Glenn four and Rochester nothing. And we'll be right back on RTC TV. All right, moving into the third. Glenn leads Rochester four nothing. And Bumford on the mound for the second inning here for Rochester Valley. Talked about it. He 
That solid first inning of work there. We'll see uh, mm -hmm. what he can do here in inning number two. Yeah. Again, boy, it's it's worth working with a lefty to see if he can be something. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. To to develop that. Uh, because they gave you such a unique look, and with Medina out, it's it's a great opportunity here for Bumford. 1990 World Series MVP pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. Right-handed pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds. I think you stumped them, Val. That would be Jose Rijo. Today is his 57th birthday. He was amazing in that World Series. That was the Bash brothers pitching against McGuire and Canseco, and he was dominant in two outings in that series. And unfortunately, his career kind of ended prematurely due to he just had all kinds of arm problems and couldn't stay on the mound. But there was about a five- or six-year period where he was about the best pitcher. If he wasn't the best pitcher in baseball, he was right there. Round ball to second. Young to Zink. Marshman. Jose Rijo, the 1990 World Series MVP, and he's 57 years old today. So that's that's my second baseman, Braylon Smith. Braylon Smith is the battery flew out to right his first time up. So that's that's my that's the baseball. Because yeah, when you remember the 1990 Reds, you think of their bullpen: Randy Myers, Norm uh, Norm Charlton, and Rob Dibble. Strike. They were the nasty boys. They even had an, a documentary on MLB Network about those three. They were kind of a unique bunch. Yeah. Are they? Ball one. So does Ken, Ken Griffey didn't come to the Reds until like 2000, I think. Does this just like all like stored in like a, a certain section up there? Or, I mean, do you have like a big file or? I mean, I. I, don't I have, have any, a hard time remembering what I had for breakfast. I don't have any kids' birthdays to remember, if that's what you're asking, Steve. <laughs> are, you, are you making a <laughs> Well, I can't remember that either. <laughs> okay. I, I can't re uh -huh. I, I got grandkids to remember now, and that's... Yeah. Everybody asked me how old he is. I was like, I don't know. He was born in January sometime. Comebacker, Bumford to Zink in time, and Braylon Smith is the second out of the inning. Yeah, I remember that series. I mean, everybody was expecting the A's. The A's had won the World Series in 89, and if anything, they were even better in 90. And I think the first inning of game one, Eric Davis takes Dave Stewart deep to center field, and that, it was like it set the whole tone for the entire series. Now, I do remember Eric Davis. I, I thought he was uh, very talented, obviously. Outside. Oh, oh my goodness. He's, he's one of the all-time, if he could have just stayed healthy, guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, power and speed and hitting and, but, I mean, he just line drive into center. Elliot Kinky there drops for base hit. Bryce Smith with a single. He's now one for one. He walked his previous time up, and that'll bring up the senior. Uh, center fielder. Excuse me, the center fielder, Chase Miller. Chase is a... Uh, Sophomore. Wasn't a huge baseball fan growing up, but I did get my fair share of uh, mm -hmm. Cincinnati Reds information because one of my good friends. Throw it her first not in time. Chad Stevens, I suppose you probably know that name. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, his dad and his family were all big Cincinnati Reds fans and Cincinnati Bengals fans. Mm -hmm. That's got to be miserable sometimes. It's impossible to overstate the impact that Marty Brenneman and Joe Nuxhall had on generations of fans, and I, I'm saying that as a, a respectful Cubs fan. I mean, because you drove anywhere from southern Indiana through Kentucky, swinging a miss. I mean, that was a 50,000-watt you know, radio, radio signal. Mm -hmm. And how many people became Reds fans because of those two guys and, and calling the, those big red machine games? Right. I mean, one and one. That's right. Well, and, you know, they're, you know, we're kind of in the middle, right? Yeah. You could be a Reds fan. You could be a Cubs fan. You could be a Tigers fan. 
you get those crazy ones every once in a while that are uh, Cardinals fans. Yeah. You know, there's just not really a, a hometown team. Mm-hmm. And even even football-wise, back when, uh, you know, before the Colts came, you know, there were, there were your Bears fans. That, you know, the Stevens were Bengals fans. You had some of the Cleveland fans. You had a mm-hmm. lot of Detroit fans. Fly ball, left center. Elliott going to his right. Elliott makes the call and the catch. And that retires the side as Chase Miller flies out. For John Glenn in the top of the third. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of two and a half innings, John Glenn leads Rochester four to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV4. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland moving into the bottom of the third. Mumford's looked pretty good foul through two innings. Uh, you know, like yeah. you said, Coach Good obviously has seen something in what he's been doing and, and gave him a, a shot here tonight. And Changing speeds. Yeah, he's, he's done really guys well. off balance. Yeah, I mean, he's not, he doesn't have tremendous velocity, but he understands pitching. Right. And that's the biggest thing, obviously, in the high school level. I mean, of course you get those ones every now and then that are thrown in the 80s or whatever, but you don't see that a lot. And if you can locate those pitches, you know, change the speed, locate your pitches, that's, that's mm-hmm. 90% of the battle yeah. right there. Campbell, Bumford, and McLaughlin do for the Zebras in the bottom of the third. Hunter Campbell is the left fielder today. Hitting 212 on the season with four RBIs. Good to see Hunter back in there. He had that migraine issue against Warsaw, and which is low. And he's back in there. Hunter's been a guy who's played a lot of different positions. He can play right field, left field, third base, second base. Fly ball, center field, Miller makes the catch. We'll bring up Landon Bumford. If you've never <laughs> had the privilege of having a migraine, it's it's no fun. I've been you know, off and on my whole life with migraines, and mm-hmm. it is not pleasant. Bumford offers but misses. This is the first time we've seen I've seen Landon bat in person. I didn't know he was a right-handed hitter. Ah, Pitch, yeah. Pitches <laughs> lefty, hits righty. That's you know we talked about that with Molly Moriarty over yeah. at the Valley and the yeah. softball team. How often do you see that? Not very often. Now we've got two of them. Popped up, foul, Marshman chasing. Lizzie chasing bottom. Lizzie Hannah. Two. Good. Frozen with a breaking ball. Excellent pitch there by Shrap Louie. Strike at number four. Has retired six in a row. I'm going to bring up Tarek McLaughlin. McLaughlin grounded to second his first time up. That's a, that's a sign of a confident pitcher when you can throw a breaking ball behind in the count and just drop it in there. That looked like a, in fact, that might have been a change. I don't think that was a curve. Runner, second base. Smith to Hannah for the out, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of three innings. John Glenn leads Rochester 4 to nothing, and you're watching our TC TV4. Moving into the fourth inning, the score remains Glenn four, Rochester zero, and Bumford going for uh, his third inning of work here tonight, Val. And has looked pretty good through uh, his first two innings of varsity work. Well, he's got his work cut out again with the um, top of the order do up, Shrap, Louis, Kayser, and Stevens. Zebras 
on the road tomorrow over at uh, Winnemac. Another big non-conference game for the Zebras. That's a uh, you know another senior laden team for the Winnemac Warriors. So right, Winnemac with a big game going on as we speak right now against Knox. So I would imagine both teams will be taking it pretty easy in terms of pitching wise. Yeah. Softball final score: Oakland defeated Northern Kentucky three to one today. Yeah. So Macy Brown and the Oakland Grizzlies going to the championship game. Awesome. Uh, Northern Kentucky is playing Robert Morris uh, later today, or might be going on as we speak, and the winner of that game will play Oakland in the championship game. But Oakland, they won that. Con they won the uh, Horizon League regular season title, and not trying to add the tournament title. And again, that's if you're unfamiliar with NCAA softball, it's just like basketball, where you, to make it to the NCAA tournament, you got to win your conference tournament. It's hit pretty well, but it's going to be foul. Trap Louie has walked and popped to short. Might have very well been a home run if it was about uh, 10 feet farther to the right. So that is strike one. Is inside one and one. TRC Conference Golf Meet. Mr. Reen just mentioned again that uh, that's tomorrow at Roselle Ford. You're going to be heading over that way, right? Yeah. I've always wondered if a bunch of kids wanted to come and follow their favorite golfer. There's no rule against it. Right. And it's yeah, the admission fee is zero. Mm. You're saying there's not a huge uh, ground ball, and Reiners can't get it. Boy, that might have gotten Reiners in the yeah. midsection. It'll be an E5, and Trap Louie is on base to lead up things off here in the fourth. Right, I mean, when... Shortstop Silas Kayser. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I that's kind of how I cover uh, how I cover golf. I just you know, usually, usually pick one guy and just kind of follow him around, and then... For the pitcher will be Brady Miller at first base. Brady Miller, courtesy runner at first for Shrep Louie. But yeah, just pick a golfer and just go out and follow them around. And so have you ever uh, just kind of picked a hole and, and kind of watched guys come through and done it that way either or just? Yeah, but not often. Yeah. yeah, I've done it a couple times that way. Sometimes when when I go to Dykeman, I, I like going to 18. That's a, it's a nice, nice scenic 18th hole there, and mm -hmm. usually there are nice couple of nice shady trees. So if it's warm <laughs> out, you can hang under the tree. You sit there by the uh, the mascot carved into the tree. Yeah. Oh, that was a pitch, nice pitch. That dropped off the table. Mm -hmm. Kayser has grounded to short and single. This is remember this is a guy who was hitting what over 500. 549 coming into this game. Throw to first, safe. <laughs> John Glenn scored three in the first, and then another run in the second, and an RBI single by Kayser. Breaking ball in the dirt, throw to first, runner back. Inside, and it gets away. I think that's a pass ball. Three and one the count. Base on balls.
first and second with nobody out. On to bring up Colin Stevens, who's walked both previous times up. Third baseman, Colin Stevens. Time for a mound meeting, and that is going to be all for Bumford. So I'm guessing there was a pitch limit there. Colton Faverda. Two weeks ago, we were complaining how cold it was up here. Now it's, uh, no. I'm never, I, I don't think I'll ever complain again about, about it being too warm. Hmm. <laughs> it's supposed to be the occasional thunderstorm tomorrow. But probably after the golf tournament's over, I think around like, like three o'clock, and that golf tournament usually gets done around one or one thirty. Okay, this is the first time we've seen Colton Fervid on the mound. First pitch out of the stretch. Low. So this is just a straight Fervid was out of the game and now he's in the game and Bumford's out of the game. So no position switches at all. Well, that makes it easier rather than when yeah. you have to try and figure out, you got a new right fielder, a new second baseman. Mm -hmm. The second baseman moved over to third, and the third baseman is now out. And yeah, you, yeah, that's another thing I've learned over the years. You've got to be kind of an eagle eye in terms of where's, who's playing where. Ball three. Colton had that injury against the Warsaw. He was diving, dove head first to try to catch a fly ball on the warning track, and it got a couple couple of rocks in his eyebrow and was really bleeding. Had to mm. go to this he had to go to the hospital to get some stitches. Strike call three and one to Stevens. Where was he at? Where's their rocks at? In the warning track. Is there? Yeah. Mm. It's a little gravelly out there. Base on balls. They're loaded with nobody out. That would bring up Bryce and Hannah. He has walked both times up. First baseman, Bryce and Hannah. Again, he's hit five home runs already in the year. Up and in. Hannah has 12 extra base hits, six doubles, a triple, and five homers. They have nine triples as a team. That's, that's impressive. One and one. He wanted that high fastball. <laughs> Two and one. <laughs> and also has 10 walks on the year. That was going into today's game. Now he's got 12 walks. Popped up. Foul ball. Tarek McLaughlin makes the catch. And the runners hold. Nice job there. That was a big out for Rochester. Big bat at the plate. Bases loaded. Number 19, Frankie 
That first out of the inning is always the most important one, right? Yep. you got to get hit before you can get the second out. That'll bring up the senior left fielder, Frankie Lizzie, hitting, came in hitting 389. He's one for two so far today. First pitch is fouled off, so that's a good start to get ahead in the count. Again, if you're Colton Faverda, you're probably thinking, if I can get a ground ball and get a double play here. Yeah. Hello. Again, in Major League Baseball, probably everybody's thinking, you know, go to second and then go to first for a double play. In high school baseball, probably if you get the ball to the pitcher or to the first baseman or the third baseman, probably going home. Ball one. Nice. Nice pitch. Yeah. Got him. That's a really good hitter he struck out. Catcher Nathan Marshman. Nice time for the first strikeout of the day by Rochester pitching. That'll bring up the senior catcher, Nathan Marshman. He's grounded to second both times up. Good stop that time. Yeah, that Jake. was that was really nice. That was that was textbook. Very possibly could have saved a run. Which is high. Ball two. Well, the one thing that Colton was able to do on those first two batters that he got out was get ahead, and here he's uh, behind now. Mm-hmm. See if he can work from uh, 2-0 count. Line drive to center. Can Elliott get there? Yes. Boy, he closed in on that in a hurry. That looked like he, it was tailing yeah, kind of he away had to, from he him. He had to get a good jump, and he did. And what a job by Faverta to get out of it. Bases loaded, nobody up, but they do not score. No runs, no hits. One error, three left. At the end of three and a half innings, it is John Glenn 4 and Rochester 0, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field as we move into the bottom of the fourth. And good job there by Fervida. It was uh, kind of dicey. He came in with uh, two on, nobody out, walks the first batter, and then able to uh, find a way to, to get those three outs and not mm -hmm. let the uh, Falcons score. It was a uh, really good starting inning for him. It'll be Young, Reinerts, and Elliott due for the Zebras here in the bottom of the fourth against Strap Louie. It's interesting to know, you know, Wabash came in here and won on Monday. Then Wabash traveled to Logansport on Tuesday and lost to a Barry team that the Zebras beat pretty convincingly. Yeah. And then Wabash came back and won at Peru on Wednesday to, in their, to improve to 7-0 and in the TRC. So Wabash has clinched a tie for the TRC title. Roche, Wabash is 7-0. and Rochester is 5-2. and Rochester is the only team with two losses. Strike. So either Wabash will win the conference title outright or they'll tie it with Rochester. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. So for Rochester to share the TRC, Wabash will have to lose at North Miami on Monday and at Whitco on Wednesday, and Rochester will have to win at Peru on Monday and at North Miami on Wednesday. Got him looking with a breaking ball. So if they both end up with two losses, it's, it's a tie, even though Wabash has the win. Head to head. Yeah, I guess they. I'm sure they'll both get a trophy. Yeah. Okay. Just, I don't think there's any like tiebreaker head to head. I okay. So. I didn't know how that worked. Some some conferences, they all kind of seem to do it a little different. Yeah. Tanner Reinerts is the batter. He singled. A little blooper to center back in the first. Tanner 
UConn is 1-0. Oh. It's just low. Outside corner at the knees. Breaking ball in there. He's got good breaking ball command. He just mm. can seemingly just dial it up and drop one in there whenever he feels like it. Got him. Well, I don't know what that was. That looked like a, like a slider or something. That was nice pitch. Or ch yeah, it changed. It was an off-speed something. Strikeout number six. Two up, two down. I'm going to bring up center fielder Evan Elliott. Evan struck out his first time up. Just high. Strike. One and two. Whenever you hear, whenever you hear somebody say a pitcher's in a rhythm, yeah, Shrap Louie's in a rhythm right now. He's just well, he's in. I like his rhythm too because yeah. he he goes uh, fairly quick. Mm -hmm. Popped up shallow right, drops our base hit. So Evan is now one for two, and that'll bring up Jake Cipher. Cipher grounded to short his first time. So Platts, their right fielder, came on a little bit late and it dropped in front of him. Cipher grounded to short his first time. Throw over to Hannah, runner back. Popped up. Left side. Who's got it? Kayser. Makes the catch, and that retires the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the fourth. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. The end of four innings. John Glenn leads Rochester four to nothing, and you're watching Art. Moving into the top of the fifth, John Glenn leading 4-0 here over the Zebras, and Fervita on the mound here for any number two of work, and Again, he did a really nice job there in the fourth, coming in with uh, two on, nobody out. And after walking the first one, he got uh, got the three outs. So, Braylon Smith, Bryce Smith, and Chase Miller due for the Falcons here in the top of the fifth. Trying to get Mr. Rini to come down here and talk to us for a little bit. He keeps ignoring me. Talk talk about how your first year was. Not over yet. <laughs> no, he saves the trivia for Mr. Screeton. Mm -hmm. Hand me that headset there, Val. I think I talked him into it. Sure. A little guest commentary here for the uh, fifth inning. Athletic Director Kevin Reaney up here in the uh, broadcast booth with us and just finishing up year one here as the Rochester Zebras AD. How did uh, how'd that go for you? I think it went okay, but I guess, you know, you have to ask other people than me. <laughs> well, we're not worried about their opinions. We're just worried about, uh, you know, what you felt, how you uh, – I know it seemed like you were having a lot of fun most of the times 
uh, when we saw you, you were enjoying what you were doing for sure. It seemed yeah. like. Yeah, I, I had a great time. It was it was really fun. Um, the coaching staff was <clears throat> uh, very accommodating for me. Um, I guess my my main focus in my job is to you know just do whatever I can so that they can just coach their kids, take care of some of the things that they maybe have taken care of in the past. But I got to go to a, a ton of events and see the kids participate, and I love going to watch watch the kids do their thing because, you know, they work really hard during the day, and the, most of them are in the weight room in Coach Guard's class. And then, you know, after practice, or after school, they're practicing. and um, So I like being there, and, and I'm not afraid to, you know, be a vocal supporter uh whether i whistle at them or holler at them and clap or whatever i i don't i don't mind doing that so i i like when they know i'm there um but for the for the most part i i just love going to all the stuff how would you describe the kids commitment to the weight room uh it's it's getting it's getting better we'll see how this summer goes um i know in the past that they've had um, when they do the summer, they do it in the morning, so it's at 6 until about 7.45 for those kids to be able to go to summer school. And, uh, and then they they have had a, another session in the evening from 6 to 7.30, and that attendance on that is not uh, not great is what I've heard in the past. And, and from, the, from the guys that are here supervising the weight room, they, they said it's kind of tough. I mean, because they need a summer too. So we're just going with one, one opportunity to lift. And most of the kids uh, commented to Coach Guard that they like that. That gives them the rest of their day. Um, we won't have a Friday lift session, so they'll have a three-day week on that. Because, you know, the kids, they're going to be in the gyms. They're going to be on the fields. They're going to be, you know, doing their stuff. And um, we – We'll see what the numbers are going to be like. I'm going to I'm going to think that the numbers are going to be pretty good. That was close. Uh, the numbers are going to be pretty good because they know that, you know, you lift for nine months and then you stop for two months. It's really tough when you get started again in in August. It'll be it'll be rough. So I think the commitment and I've noticed um, a, a physical change in a lot of them. So um, that's that's good. And I hope that translates into you know better results on their fields and in the pool and and wherever they're doing their thing it's one of those things where you kind of got to walk you got walk that line a little bit in the summer between giving them you know good work and and overworking them uh, and also letting them be kids too right right and i think i think some of that is um you know none of those things are required um they're they're obviously highly encouraged because the opportunity is there from the state to allow that to happen. But mm-hmm. at the same time, a lot of the kids that's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. And if you know if they if they want if they want to come to the gym on Tuesday and Thursday nights from six to eight, then Coach Malco said that you know make that available for them. So you know they 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 get to be kids, um, and at the same time, um, this is kind of what they want to do. So we're trying to provide those opportunities and um and the coaches i think have a pretty the coaches want to have a summer also I mean, mm-hmm. for the most part so you know nobody's overdoing it but we're um I'm, I'm excited to see how the summer works out so far the scheduling on the the activities has been pretty easy um you know each each one of the coaches is doing their thing and 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 wanting this and that and so um, nice play he is out. Wait a minute. We're going to have a conference. We're going to talk about it for a second. Let's the base, see, uh, the base umpire is going to say, "I didn't see it." Yeah, he's safe. Did he drop the ball or did he get under it? He dro- He didn't catch the ball. Yeah, no, you can see there on the I'm, replay. The I'm ball careful was to on use the, the word "dropped," but he didn't catch it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the ball was on the ground. Ball on the ground is not good. No. Not in baseball or football. It's not good. <laughs> so. so Braylon Smith is safe on the play. He scores, and it's 5 to nothing. Chase Miller is now at first with one out. You scored that as a hit there, Val. I call it a fielder's choice. Yeah. 
He fielded it clean and he threw him out at first. What does Marshall Fishback meant to Rochester High School? I mean, from a publicity standpoint? Um, how, how big is that? I think, I think it'll be bigger as time goes on. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to measure that right now. Mm -hmm. Um, the momentum that can be created from that, from the, from the activities specifically that he was in football, of course, wrestling and track, um, and, you know, just how Marshall went about stuff. Right. He, he is not a look at me and how hard I work kind of guy. He's just, I'm going to work harder than everybody else mm -hmm. and then see what happens. And he always had a lot of fun doing what he was doing. And he was... From my yeah. perspective, he was a fantastic teammate. That's kind of how you do it. He was always, you know, yeah. pumping up the other guys. When you see a kid on statewide TV, not only win a state championship, but then he does an interview on the mat at Gainbridge Fieldhouse with Greg Rakestraw. I mean, that's, that's yeah. great publicity. Yeah, I, I don't, and you know what? For Marshall, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I don't mean this in a negative mm -hmm. way, he – he may not have even understood it. It was he understood that he won. Yeah, but he didn't know who Rake Straw was. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he just thought, "No, oh, here's a guy who wants to talk to me about." <laughs> so mm. I'll talk to him. But Marshall, mm -hmm. he's as humble as they come. Yeah, and uh, he, he's a he's a great representation of what we got. Hopefully, the kids um, kind of kind of see that he's a like I said, he's a rah rah guy with his teammates, but he's not a rah rah uh, cheerleader. Uh, a, a, late, a leader like that with, you know, he doesn't have to. He just does his thing. And I think, you know, the, those programs, um, they had 36, 36 kids in the gym for football yesterday morning at 630. Um, and, you know, wrestling is going to – obviously it's going to continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. We're expecting great things from that program. But just so many kids that even come out for track and that want to throw. Mm-hmm. Mainly because, uh, mainly what, be uh, he is out. The batter is out. What just happened? He inadvertently hit Jake on the backswing, and I think the umpire has some has some discretion, and he he is calling the batter Stevens out. It's batter interference. Yeah. Jake was up to make a play. Mm-hmm. Huh. Like, oh, Jake, Jake went, was okay. Yeah, he went down like a sack of potatoes after that. I didn't really see the contact there and didn't know what happened to Jake, so. Yeah, I I missed it. Jake blocked out the contact from my angle. I mean, he had the – Yeah. I, I didn't see what happened. But well, I couldn't see it from this angle be, either, yeah. Be a bat. One run on one hit, no errors, and two left for John Glenn on the top of the fifth. We go to the bottom of the fifth, and John Glenn leads Rochester 5 to nothing. and you're watching RTC TV 4. Air. I called it an infield hit. Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field. Moving into the bottom of the fifth, Glenn picks up one run in the top of the fifth. Leads 5-0 over the Zebras. And talking to uh, Rochester Athletic Director Kevin Arini. This is the last home event of the year. Here you said. Yeah, yeah, that's what we've got on the schedule. We do have, you know, we have JV, <clears throat> JV baseball scheduled to be home on Thursday uh, with Peru, but we already know Peru's not going to play. Um, but we are not going to give up that date with those officials. If we can get another JV game here, we will do that. So that's a, that's a possibility. Um, but getting late in the season like this, there aren't a lot of teams that are ready to ready to give up their or get to their. That was a nice play. Oh, terrific wow. play by Kayser and a nice job by Hannah to keep his foot on the bag. Zink grounds out to short to start the bottom of the fifth. That was a bad oh, hop. Fielder, that was a big hop, that's yeah. for sure. Kind of wondering if the ground might be dry, might be prone to bigger hops. <laughs> it's Hunting. As can't well as as well we're, as the field drains, yes. I can't believe we're talking about a dry field after yeah, right. what we've been through the last six weeks. <laughs> Hunting struck out looking his first time. So one of the things you just mentioned, you you don't want to give up the uh, the refs or the umps. How how has that? Because this has been kind of an emphasis, right, with the IHSAA and the uh, shortage of referees and, and umpires uh, throughout the nation, but the state particularly. 
how has that affected what you do? Is has it been something that you've seen be a big part of your planning? Strike two and two. <clears throat> um, w no, for us, no. I mean, they sent out a su uh, survey just recently about how many games we've had to cancel, baseball, softball, how many games baseball softball have we had to play with just one umpire um and um we we have zeros on all those we haven't had to have a, a baseball or softball varsity or jv uh with just one up and we haven't had to cancel but um i i don't know what what necessarily that has to do with but i mean some of those schools that are canceling their jv baseball games they've got three jv teams um, uh. For metropolitan, Indi you know, and in, yeah. in, in the area, so that I don't want to say that doesn't count. Yeah, but but you've got. I think got it's been mostly JV games in the in the in the Indy area, and when you've got the major, when the major newspapers and major TV stations are talking about it, then it create. I think it's maybe misinformation. <laughs> it's maybe it, it's they're just is bending it? it a little bit, but that's but that's what it is, and they're and they use, yeah. um, and they're using if if, if varsity needs officials those guys are being bumped to the varsity mm -hmm. games instead of the jv games so um you know it's it, it we've we also have greg martz who is fantastic he's been doing ad uh official contracting for you know 17 18 years and he has you know the contacts with these officials that uh that you know he makes a phone call or two phone calls and we're we're booked so uh, that's a that's a very valuable. We've got um, we just put uh, going to a different sport. We just put uh, Plymouth boys basketball on the schedule February seventh. It's a Tuesday night at home, and in like okay. fifteen minutes, Greg had Greg had two uh, regional and one state level officials booked, hmm. just like that. So, I, you know, it, we we've been lucky, mm -hmm. um, maybe, but Greg does a. He's he's very focused on that and uh, does a really good job. Are there any are there any officials who who don't like working here or have told Roger that they? <laughs> I don't I don't think so. I mean I yeah. think um, for the most part it's mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the official behind the plate tonight. He's never been here, mm -hmm. um, but he's in, but he's doing our sectional, so he was excited to come, you know, and see what what we've got. But anyway, I, I haven't. It was a pleasure for me to get mm -hmm. to meet some of these guys because they were around 25 years ago when I was at McConaughey, mm -hmm. and I kind of remember them. Uh, we all look a little different. We're all shaped a little different mm -hmm. than, than we were that long ago. But, um, you know, it's been nice to rekindle some of that, um, some of those little bit of contacts and relationships. But they they have indicated that they like they like the continuity of when they come to rochester they know what's going they know what to do who's going to be here how it's going to work there's no you know clunky uh procedures or anything they know where to go basketball they just go right in they go right in their officials room they all I haven't had to sh i didn't have mm -hmm. to show anybody anything so um they they all have enjoyed it uh, pretty much as it, and for an ad there's no more comforting feeling than mm -hmm. <laughs> you know than having guys come and do your games that that like being there so, and and they appreciate the the stat, like, they appreciate Terry Screeton doing doing his thing. Mm -hmm. and in basketball, they appreciate Kathy, you know, being at the scoring table with with Terry or whoever's doing it, and you know those familiar yeah. faces. And uh, that that's been good for me to kind of blend into it. And I haven't tried to change anything too much. It'll be Hannah, Lizzie, and Marshman due for John Glenn here in the top of the sixth. They lead it five to nothing. Strike. First pitch strike. Have you had a a senior or any Rochester student come up to you and say, "Hey, I'd like to, I'd like to officiate someday. I'm going um, gra to graduate pretty soon, but I'd like to get into officiating." <laughs> no, we ha we haven't. However, they you know the IHSA is looking at being able to sponsor a course uh, where they can get high school credit, uh, like an officiating course, so that when they do graduate, they can be licensed. Um, and uh, Principal Hawes and I have talked about it a little bit, and uh, we're not opposed to that. We haven't really jumped on that, you know, scene and, you know, the, and it's not here. We don't, we don't see it here with the parents um, and, and the berating of the umpires and different things like that. But um, I, I think that's what makes the news. Mm -hmm. um, you know, games like this, 
where you have two pretty good teams and two pretty good umpires and some things have happened and everybody's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, th- those kind of things don't make the news. <laughs> they, they, right. don't, they, don't get, right. they don't get the yeah. press. And uh, so, you know, the kids here, and it, it's, a tough, it's a tough gig. <sighs> Fair ball. It's a tough gig doing, uh, you know, being blue. And um, we, we are very appreciative of um, those guys that come here and, you know, they're, they're hot too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> an official's yeah. not a uh, – and we've got Josh here that takes care of them in the winter, gets them their drinks and things like that. So they, they appreciate that. And, and that's, that's all part of the continuity of what we offer when they, when they come to Rochester. Well, that's that's probably ninety percent of the reason they want to come back, right? This yeah. Is Josh is taking care of them. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? They never say, "Where's Josh?" Because you know he's usually pretty <laughs> close, pretty close <laughs> by. But um, that was slick. Nice play by Tarek. Nice. And he nice. throws the second for a force out. Um, what do you think? Could he get him at first if he went to first from his knee? Yeah. Okay, we don't have to. We don't have to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the good thing. Yeah, we don't have to know. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think you know, seeing those, seeing those guys that you can tell they they're comfortable when they get here. They they don't need any yeah extra things, but they know that they can always ask um, for, yeah. for different things. And Dan uh, Adams was here to umpire the Northfield game, and I thought he was the same guy who tore his patellar tendon <laughs> officiating a football game here. Oh wow! About three, four years ago, uh-huh. yeah. he, somebody was returning a kickoff for a touchdown. Base hit to center by Marshman. That's not. Well, if it had been three years ago, it probably would have been Northfield. <laughs> returning yeah. it for a touchdown. I don't think we've had. Well, I take that back. Landon Kelly returned one a couple of years ago, three years ago. I don't know who that was against, but uh, Dan is an he is an assigner. Mm-hmm. For baseball, and Greg leans on him a little bit, and um, he does a good job. And he has a priority list of, you know, if he's got, with all the cancellations and the reschedulings and things like that, if, you know, he gets varsity games and he's got some JV guys that are working and in a varsity game, a conference game, to get moved into that slot, he, mm-hmm. he'll, he'll move them. And, you know, as ADs, you, you don't like it, but – what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. And we haven't had that happen. Um, in, in fact, we were, and I can't remember what game it was, we were the recipient of that where a guy said that he got pulled off of a JV game at McConaughey at 7 o'clock to come here and do our varsity game. Hmm. So we, we like that. Um, we like that real well. And that's, and that's helpful. I mean, Greg, would, Greg does a great job, but um, having that assigner um, – Helps, helps out. Okay, I, I, I got a little out of order here. The Stevens let off the inning hmm. by reaching in an error. It was Hannah who grounded into a force out. It was Lizzie who just singled, and now Marshman's batting. Mm-hmm. I thought I thought Stevens was declared out. He wasn't. The runner was declared out. So Stevens, it was like a caught stealing, and Stevens, who was up at the plate and who inadvertently hit Cypher, got to lead off this inning. So there. This is what happens when you have an engrossing conversation with the athletic director and you're. (laughs) Stop it. Yeah, gross, a gross conversation. (laughs) I thought I was going to have. Old Reese was going to make it up. Was going to make it up in the press box tonight, but he's uh, he's declining. Okay. Uh, he he uh, he's going to go with us tomorrow for the uh, conference golf. We're going to leave it. We're going to leave about ten after six. Um, so okay. so he wants to go. That's why I don't know. You come home for college. You work your first week. He was worked in Gary all all week, and then. Uh, He's going to get up at 5.30 to go watch guys he played golf with last year. Uh, yeah. And, Gary, that's uh, got to be interesting. Yeah. They, 
they were work, working at a uh, at the uh, waste uh, in the in the waste department in Gary um, with their city system, I guess. Um, yeah, they were. Yep, they were up there all week. So. He said he can't do hot anymore. He's ready. He's ready for a break. Uh, <laughs> he said, I'll see you in the morning. He uh, said, okay. First year go well at Purdue? He, um, yeah, he, he did he did great. Um, it went well. He got involved in some things. He's, he joined a fraternity, and he's um, he got to play some golf. And, you know, monitoring his grades were, was okay. So <laughs> he's going to continue to do that. And um, he's got some fraternity pledge brothers that are from the Indy area that um, play like he does. Um, so he's happy to find those guys. Um, that took a weird bounce. No way, T. Got him. Nice play. Yeah, that took a weird hop. Um, so he, yeah, he's glad to be home, um, and you know, jumped right into work right away when they were, yeah, they um, told him he was going to be on the road Monday, and didn't tell him where they were going, and he, I, I got a hold of him Monday afternoon, and he told me where they were. So <laughs> <laughs> there you go, welcome to the world of work, huh? Hmm. So no runs, one hit, one error, two left at the end of five and a half. John Glenn leads Rochester five to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV four and a half. They've scored uh, 20 or more runs in a game. Uh, one, two, Jeez. three times. <laughs> they've uh. scored in double figures. So in three games, they've scored over 60 runs. That's a lot of teams that don't even score that many in a season. They've scored double figures 13 times in 20 games. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. He's still throwing pretty hard. Colton Faverta, the batter. This is his first at bat of the game. Mm -mm. Oh. Right. Sometimes in the press box, you have a very good angle. Yeah. That's always the uh, thing I like to say if, you know, maybe it looks like uh, something up here that uh, the ump or the ref usually has a better view of it than we do. And. So I'm sure he sees it better than we did. He bunts. The throw. Dang it. Got him. That gum it. Nice play too. by nice play by Stevens. And I don't think we're gonna see Stevens pitch today, but you saw kind of his arm strength there. It's pretty nice. Shortstop, Terry McLaughlin. Did you say his dad was the ba uh, the basketball coach? Bryce and Hannah's dad is the uh, Hannah's, Hannah's dad. Yeah. He's their first baseman. I wonder if um, strike to McLaughlin. And I would assume Bryson is he a junior this year? Yes. I would assume he's getting some pretty good looks on the basketball side of things, college wise. Uh, I bet he's getting some pretty good looks at, on the baseball, baseball side, side of things too. too right. Right. Yeah. How do you spell his last name? H A N N A H. No, I was talking about Stevens' kid. S T E P H E N S. I wonder if his dad is the AD, Eric. Possibly. You don't see Tarek strike out very often, but he goes down there, and that's strikeout number eight for yeah. Strap Louie. Break up Gavin Young. And he doesn't waste any time. I mean, Young. Yeah. Young no, wasn't rolling. even in the box, and and Strap Louie was. Let's go. He's got a lot of. A little little flare. Yeah. yeah. He's got a. It's all, all of his yeah. momentum is coming downhill. Mm -hmm. There's no wasted motion. It's pretty economical, and it's all coming at you. Mm -hmm. He's got. An, I like his mechanics. That's probably. That's probably. That's probably another one of Val. Val Jinxes will probably. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have scripted that any yeah. better, Val. Mm -hmm. I mean. Not laughing at that, but what in the heck is going Val, on down there? Val is it is uncanny <laughs> what he does. I mean, it's not just the broadcaster jinx about free throws. He can do that with the best of them. He will say that this person never does this, 
And next sure thing enough. you know, he does it. Yep. Sure enough. The, the Val T. Jinx. Well, yeah, Tanner. I'd like to see Tanner <laughs> barrel one up here. That, First pitch is low and outside to Reinerts. I mean, that left fielder. And center. look at the center fielder. Yeah, they're playing pretty shallow. Yeah. That's a deep short out there in the left. Come on, Tanner. Let's see a barrel one up here, big yeah, boy. Yeah, I think Tanner's just scratching the surface. I, and, and, if, and if this is the surface, well, then it's a hell of a surface. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the surface of the moon, but. Ah. <sighs> Rounder to third. He's got to be able to drive that one to third or to right field. Throws to first right. for the out. No runs, no hits, no errors. One jinx, one left. <laughs> the end of six. <laughs> Which box did I put that in? <laughs> John Clemley's Rochester 5 to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome box. back. We're just talking about Val's powers that he has here, jinxing people. And it was uh, on display there as he was talking about the. Uh, pitcher and his control <laughs> as he plunks the batter on the next pitch that was uh that was something uh, to behold there yeah, and meanwhile gavin young is probably saying yeah thanks a lot i just took one in the back you'll have to ask him about that you know i i, I made him hit you right yeah <laughs> oh man it'll be bryce smith miller and trap louie do for john glenn here in the top of the seventh eight nine one Yes, eight nine one. So as you move into, I mean, just finishing year one here, Kevin. But as you uh, start to think about uh, year two, you know, we talked about it this afternoon with talking sports. Lots of different looks for all of the teams, sectional wise, uh, coming into to next season. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of a lot of good prospects coming up for the teams. You know, football team should be solid. Uh, basketball teams are going to be uh, solid as well, and Coach Leap, you know, she always does well with the uh, with the volleyball team as well. But they're all going to be playing a little different uh, look in their sectionals. Yeah, that's um, we got a lot of seniors. Uh, we should have a lot of seniors in in most of those programs that you just mentioned. Um, and so, you know, you have a strong senior class that generally. Uh, not always, but generally relates to some success. And um, with the new sectional alignments, I've indicated to all of the schools that we are indeed interested in hosting any and all of them. Um, yeah, we got to spread that out a little bit, but um, I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm not bowing out of any of those boys and girls basketball or volleyball. Yeah, mm -hmm. not, not bowing out of hosting because um, I think we have great facilities and not only that, but I think we have um, I think we have great people that can make those make those events uh, run great. And, um, uh, you know, that's that's the main thing. I mean, you can have the best facility in the world, but if you can't if you can't put people together that can that can operate and and work together and provide a great experience for the kids and in the schools then it doesn't matter what your facilities are like and i'm excited we have we have a couple um that are very close to being nailed down it, it basically goes the um there's one school that's in charge of kind of collecting the data and then um putting it out there and if we can come to a unanimous decision as a group as a sectional group Generally, the IHSA will say okay, oh. but uh, if, yeah. if we, you know, if we have five schools that say they want to host, well, the, the, the state steps in. They're gonna, they'll yeah. figure it out, and mm -hmm. then there you have it. So, um, you know, I did today get an email. Oh, I did today get an email from the IHSA asking if we were interested in hosting the volleyball, a volleyball regional. You know, regardless, and. Immediately sent back. Absolutely, we would we would absolutely love it. We have a, a great gym for that, and we have an aux gym that uh, auxiliary gym that they can use it for warm up, or if need be, we have a absolutely beautiful middle school gym. So yeah, yeah. So uh, she was very happy that I responded quickly and positively. So I th I think that one's gonna we're we're gonna host the regional. That'll be on October twenty second. 
So um, the only thing about that is I may have to miss the cross-country semi-state, which we always go to. Yeah. So we'll see how that works. Well, and, and another selling point for uh, coming here, obviously, is you don't get the uh, the broadcaster's coverage anywhere else like you do here. Oh, no, they, <laughs> don't, they don't have any idea of the of the kind of coverage. I mean, you had mentioned when we were going to go down and play at CFD Investment in Kokomo that – we were going to broadcast on. You guys were going to broadcast on three different, three different platforms. Uh-huh. And uh, the Eastern athletic director and, and head baseball coach was absolutely thrilled with that prospect. Yeah. So, um, just we we don't take for granted what you guys do. Um, hopefully, you don't feel like that. But it's absolutely fantastic the uh, coverage that we get from RTC and, um, you know the kid. I, I hate to say it, but the kids probably just think it's normal. Um, come on, good job. And and you know other schools they just they just can't hardly believe they just can't hardly believe what we have and and what's what's possible and you know in the in the future and I haven't done it but on my plan for next year is you know anytime we have somebody come visit as a as a visiting school I'll be sending that out that you know where where the game can be either seen on RTC TV4 or, or wherever, the IHSA network or wherever it, it's going to be. And and I think the other schools will appreciate that very much. Right, because we realize John Glenn doesn't have any games on TV either, and I, th- I hope we're giving them – yeah, I hope, I hope we're giving them a fair shake if you're a Falcon fan and you're watching at home in, yeah. in, in the Walkerton area. Well, I, th- I think in listening to you guys enough that, you know, while you guys do want – I'm not sure what that was, but – Ferv just forgot to use his glove there. He just tried to bare hand that throwback. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> he got a little chuckle out of that, I think. Yeah. But, um, I, you know, I listened to you guys enough that while you want the Zebras to win, you're absolutely not homers. Um, you appreciate mm-hmm. good play and, and um, good coaching from the visitors and, and good effort. and. Mm-hmm. You know, watching, watching and listening, and putting it together, it, it feels very, very professional and and um, and well, like I said, we just we just can't take it for granted and hope hope we don't. So, well, I don't think there's I don't think that feeling is there. I think the the feeling that uh, it's a partnership has has always been strong with with us and, and Rochester for sure, and it. It's something that, like you said, they, they grow up with that maybe they, as a player, uh, you know, they don't realize that there's not a lot of small 2A schools that have, you know, not just a, a TV station, but, you know, they get coverage from, you know, the professional like Val as far as writing stories and then even, you know, the radio station and, and the newspaper and, I mean, it's – it's pretty intense the type of coverage that they get, and sometimes they probably want to just go home and not <laughs> not, not have to answer questions. But that's, well, that's too bad. That's part yeah. of the deal. Um, now the uh, the coverage that that we get, I remember way back when um, they started covering the IHSA uh, swim sectional, mm-hmm. and um, you know covering that live, and there weren't a lot of other uh, events that were being covered like that live other than maybe the basketball game, but it, it was, um, it was refreshing. Even when we, we went to an invitational in Zionsville um, in December and coach Brown told, told the coaches and, and everybody in the coaches meeting that if they want to send a message to their fans that they can watch it you yeah. know, <laughs> on RTC TV four that, you know, it's, Oh, Okay. Yeah. Got a pickle and tagged out for out number three. Well, the sniper got to Colin Stevens. Yep. Yeah. But uh, we'll call that an E5 on the ball hit by Hannah. Mm-hmm. Stevens to second. Uh, Miller, the courtesy runner, scores. That makes it 7 nothing. She was. But yeah, the, retires the side. The I was, I was going to say we were down at Zionsville, and you have these bigger schools that were in this invitational, and they're mm-hmm. looking at Coach Brown like, "Are you, are you kidding me?" Yeah, I said no. It's they'll be up there, and they'll live stream it, and they'll and you can watch it live. Yeah, and uh, 
those coaches looked at her and said, how the, how do you do that? And she said, that's, that's how we do it. Yeah. And it's it just was, how we roll. It's how we roll. It, yeah. was, it was really cool to, um, you know, she said walking out of that meeting, she's like, yeah, little old Rochester, we've got, we've got great coverage, um, for our kids and, and we think it's a great, like you said, as a partnership, not only just with the athletic coverage or the athletics, but what RTC does for, you know, the school and the equipment um, that they provide in the different areas. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's one thing that Mr. Hawes impressed upon me early in the school year is that, and I knew it because, you know, I'm, I'm uh, pretty familiar with Mr. McCarter that, um, you know, it, it's like that, and we want to keep that relationship real strong, and we'll do what we need to because, you know, when you have a, a town like this and you have this kind of coverage, you you got to make it work. Well, I, I feel, you know, if from my standpoint, I feel very fortunate to have a, a job like I do working for RTC, and it, it's the type of company that, uh, not, not that I want to do an RTC ad here, but it's the type of company here that uh, you see a lot of people that retire that have 30, 35, you know, years of uh, service. And you know that's, uh, that's the type of uh, company that you want to work for because they obviously treat their people well and they stick around. Yeah, and, and you, see, you see the same service linemen that are just absolutely salt-of-the-earth good guys. And, mm-hmm. you know, it seems like, and I and it just kind of, after even though it's my first year there's always in talking to you there's always something else there's another we're going to try this or we're going to maybe take a look at doing that and uh you know that's that's fun and you you having the ability to you know try those things i don't know if free reign is the <laughs> is the right term because i'm not in those meetings but it just feels like maybe if we could do this maybe if we could do that and then when you have a staple of their, you know, on their like like Val, who's going to do the stories and he's going to do the reporting, and then uh, the video coverage is just, it just goes together so well. Yeah, sometimes things don't work out well, but you know, <laughs> when when I'm out there hanging a <laughs> hanging a camera from a pole out in uh, the outfield, you know, it's like, hey, let's see what this does, and <laughs> right, right, you know, and, oh, this doesn't look bad, but you know, like like Val said last week, I wasn't zoomed in quite as tight and. I said, well, it's because it's so windy that when I zoomed in tight, it was really shaking the the camera really bad. And, but yeah, I just I do kind of have a, a little bit of options, and you know, just like this camera here that I've got a little joystick that I can control here remotely. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's you know, obviously there's some restrictions budget wise on things, but they they uh, they treat us well, and you know we. It, you, you said, you know, it's like John Glenn. They don't have this kind of coverage for baseball. Spring sports are difficult oh. to, to cover. <laughs> I'm I mean, sure. I'm sure. You know, this this net right here, I love the net. I'm sure the net is great for the players, but I hate the thing <laughs> as far as broadcasting goes. It's a nightmare for me. And Aaron, Aaron Huffman's pitch inning for Braden Zink. Go on. You, you know, mm. next year, obviously, we've got some plans yep. in place to maybe uh, – You know, maybe batting. Zink. Oh, never mind. Zink's batting. Was well, batting. Huffman is running. Safe. Throw it. Oh, what in the world just happened there? And this guy uh, hurt. Yeah, second baseman is down. Or is that the shortstop? So, not sure here what just happened. Huffman was in as a courtesy runner. He's now at third. And Zink. Let's check this camera angle here. No, nope, that's not the right one. Let's see if I can get this shot here. Let's see what this one did. No, nope, I didn't hit it quick enough. i try and get you the replay on that one, but I didn't hit the button quick enough. So, Zebras have runners at second and third. Who are they looking at there, Val? Can you tell? I believe that was is that the Braylon Smith second baseman I guess I could do this I guess he's okay and gonna stay in the game I 
I don't think he made any contact with Huffman. Did he? I don't think he collided. Did he collide with the shortstop? Yeah, I don't really know. Uh, must have been because I don't think it was if the uh, the runner. See, there's that net getting in my way again, Kevin. Trying to zoom in on the second baseman. One another count to Hunting. Interesting that Stevens plays in, even with a seven-run lead. They play back at second and short and at first. Ball two. I think it's ball two. Hmm. You know, I ran into Tim from WRSW the other day up at Harvest Moon, and we talked for a bit, and he was asking about what we were doing and stuff. I said, you guys do... Uh, any spring? And he's like, no, we, we stay away from it. It's too much of a pain. <laughs> well, <laughs> we have a big glutton yeah, uh, for punishment like, in you, not, yeah. you know, that, that loves hauling these boxes around, these cases around. It's, every time I see you lugging them, I'm thinking, God, there's got to be a better way. Uh, there's got to be a better way. That's, that's how I keep this, uh, you know. <laughs> okay. That's Is how that, I keep in shape. I need <laughs> to start carrying those boxes. Then. Right. Well, the thing about spring sports is I think you develop even closer relationships with the kids than you had before. Part of it is because you've been following them in fall and winter, mm -hmm. so you already know them. Right. Now it's spring, and you're just kind of hanging around the dugout a little bit more. You're hanging around the for the softball or baseball. Um, you know, you're hanging around the track. You, there's just – there's. It's it's a little different atmosphere in the spring, yeah. uh, sports-wise, I think. Yeah, but. and you know what else? I think it – I don't know if the kids will say anything to the, about that, but – when it's 45 degrees and not real nice and you're here, they, they're they not going to tell you that they notice that kind of stuff, but they do. Mm -hmm. um, the mean, fist you mean bumps, like that Pioneer game when I was standing out there on a ladder in 40-mile-an-hour wind? Oh, yeah. Well, I was at Culver Military at the golf <laughs> at the, at the nine-hole golf match because our golf coach tore his cornea. Um, but the um, – well, I, you know, last Friday, a week ago, what was the weather like at Wabash? Not good. You know, and we were down there on the track with the kids, and it was not, and it wasn't great. But I got, I got a lot of fist bumps, and I got a lot of high fives um, that Friday. Got him swinging, and that is the ball game. A terrific pitching performance by Joe Shrap Louie. No runs, one hit, one error, two left. John Glenn defeats Rochester seven to nothing. Yeah, they're solid. <laughs> they're solid. <laughs> well, somebody in their team knows who Tarek is. Yeah. They probably played a little bit. Maybe yeah. even together on the travel right. on the travel team. Yeah, uh, that's, that's and, the thing, yeah. Tarek and Aaron Huffman both play in the South Bend area, so I imagine that the mm -hmm. Great Lakes are uh, keen. So. Yeah, they probably have a couple players up that way as well. 